In today's Jedi Survivor video, we'll take a look at the best perks you need to get your hands on and a few really strong builds that fit them very nicely. There are 22 you can collect through exploration, boss battles, and even buy from vendors, but only 10 perk slots you can have at max, so there's quite a bit of mix and matching needed. Also, if you end up finding this video useful, a like would help a lot, and let's dive right in. In the early game and when your perk slots are limited, I found that Resilience and the Shatter perk both provide a great balance between defense and offense. The first one is unmissable as you get it from the main story, while the second you get after defeating the Rancor boss during the Missing Prospector side mission right here on Kobo. I ran some tests with both and Resilience provides a nice extra section of block meter on top of the ones you already have. Even so, the difference for just one perk slot cost is incredible and this means you can now block or reflect a lot more often. There are way too many annoying encounters with loads of ranged enemies, so this helps a lot with that and it still remains very viable even in the endgame. Shatter is even more useful as it gives you a roughly 10% additional stamina damage to each of your hits. In this test, you can see two full hits with the lightsaber in the blaster stance doesn't even take half of the purge trooper's stamina, but rather around 40%. However, the same two attacks, but with this perk on, that's more than half now or closer to 60%. Of course, these are estimates since we cannot see the true numbers, but it shortens the time needed to stagger a foe by at least one or two blows, which in large combat scenarios helps a ton. There's only one other perk with a low cost that I found to be useful at this stage and that is going to be the dexterity which you actually get from the chamber of reasoning right here in the jungle area in the region called the basalt rift. So basically you have to complete it and eventually you're going to get it but this is going to increase the damage on your throw attacks. In this game throw attacks are actually super strong so it makes sense that you will want to go for this one especially if you have like a couple of spare perk slots. You can basically do a lot more damage also in the range of like 15 to 20 percent give or take depending on the attack but it makes a noticeable difference once you get the full upgraded versions that deal the most amount of damage especially the charged ones on something like the double sabers or the cross guard. However, if you can already afford to also put this on top, if you can get one more perk slot, you can basically go for some of the best in the entire game, but you're gonna have to do some sacrifices. So let's talk about our first legendary perk, which is going to be the Fortitude. This increases lightsaber damage, but also incoming damage is increased against Cal. It also costs 4 perk slots in total, so that's quite a steep price you should keep in mind. You get this from the Fogged Expanse on Kobo once you defeat the Vile Vile Maul legendary boss in this area. To access this, you need to basically fall into these gaps right here and then just take the slider down into the boss arena. Once you defeat them, you can just grab the perk from the edge of the platform. Of course, yet again, I went with some tests to see exactly where we stand and going with the cross guard without any mods equipped, I was dealing about 50% to this Shiver Pete's health bar, which is actually not too shabby. However, when going with the mod on top, the damage was roughly 15% higher as it now took around 65% of the health bar with the same attack. Of course, this can depend on the type of attack and lightsaber stance, it might even go up to 20, but it's still quite significant and makes a huge difference. The damage taken by Cal is quite similar to the one that he deals, so also around 50% give or take from my testing. But you end up having such a high HP not too long into the game anyway, from the health essences and the survivor skills that you barely even notice the extra loss in HP. However, you will definitely notice the increase in damage against enemies, which now take a lot fewer hits to get downed. However, if you're going with a full lightsaber melee build, then you will want to couple this with the versatility. You get this early from Z Shop for just 5 data discs, and I consider this another god tier mod. And that's because it actually lets you deal extra damage for a few seconds after switching lightsaber stances. It's just like a couple of seconds at most that the buff lasts, but I tested this with the Fortitude on top, and while previously I was talking about like 65% damage to the Shiver Pete's health bar, now it was closer to 80, maybe 85%, with both of them following a quick stand switch. Given how easy it is to do that, it makes this for the perfect melee build with just two mods 
to almost deal 50% more extra damage on top. And the best part is that there's 3 slots left assuming that you maxed out to 10 to basically fit the Shatter and the Resilience perk from the previous point and get the perfect melee setup in Jedi Survivor. Now if you also want to add some force powers in the mix then I recommend switching out versatility with the Equilibrium, you can also buy this from Z Shop. And it's either one or the other because they kind of do the same thing, with the exception that Equilibrium only buffs damage for one hit following the usage of a force power, while the versatility lasts for a couple of seconds and goes for all of your attacks. Moving on to 5, let's talk about possibly the strongest perk for a blaster stance build. This is called the Ambient Dexterity and it temporarily increases lightsaber damage after shooting targets. I tested this on a Raider enemy first without any perks on, and using one blast plus one lightsaber attack takes roughly 85% of its health bar. However, I went with Ambit Dexterity on, and this time around using the exact same combo, almost one shots it, basically just leaves it with a spit of HP over there, maybe like one max 5% at best. By the way, you can still add Fortitude in the mix and basically make the same combo to now one shot the same Raider enemy as you're getting the increased damage to your lightsaber from both of the sources. This can be a very good hybrid if you're going with that. Now to get Ambi Dexterity, you basically have to grab it from the final Jedi Chamber on Kobo right here from the Devastated Settlement. You will need to head over to the second platform in the middle and then direct the beam of light to the small entrance to the side of this larger pillar in the distance with the golden cube on top of it. Once there, just descend in the cave, solve it using the Kobo Grinder and grab it from the altar. If you do so, you have enough points left for one final perk to basically make the best blaster stance build in the whole game and buff all your damage now to the blaster. So this is via the marksmanship perk that you also get from the devastated settlement. All you have to do is from the waypoint to enter the main court going through the gap and then reach the top of the tower onto your left as you enter it. Here you will find the marksmanship perk just standing there so you can grab it and activate it right away. This is going to buff the damage of all your blaster shots so now not only do your lightsaber attacks deal extra damage but your blasters as well. Like I said in the previous video when I covered this that's about 20-25% to increased damage but it might actually be more. I ran a new test on this battle maw emptying all the 10 shots with and without the mod on so here are the results. Without any mods on it takes roughly 30% of the creature's HP but when I added just the marksmanship mod on, it was like 50%. So yeah, it might be a lot bigger even than the conservative 25% number that I gave you. But if you combine this with the ambient dexterity as well as the fortitude mod, you basically have the perfect blaster stance which deals the maximized damage and you're not losing much in terms of other penalties. There were a few honorable mentions as well, Persistence mod is one of them, each enemy that you down during the slow time gives you a small amount of HP back, unfortunately this falls off really bad as soon as you hit mid to late game, and especially if you have a big enough HP bar that makes the healing barely even noticeable. However, it's very easy to build the ultimate meter up, so your uptime with it is really high. By the way, if you do still want it, you can get it from the Chamber of Fortitude at the bottom of the corroded silo, right here in the southern reach on Kobo. Another one is the Gambler plus the Wisdom combo, which both give extra experience gain, though no joke, this actually drops off so bad in the endgame, I'm barely noticing any difference. I ran a test with no mod, with the Wisdom, and then with both Gambler and Wisdom, and I think I was actually losing XP gain when having both of the perks activated. Not sure exactly why you would need XP farms in a game like this that literally showers you in levels, but if you still want that, you can get the Gambler's perk from the Crypt of Irma right here on Jedi. You just have to follow the main path the usual way and get out into the open area and jump over this larger gap. Then just keep it to the right until you hit this cave and try to go right at the end of it. The hint can be found right outside of this cave, so it's basically to activate the two outer pillars on the top and the two inner pillars onto the bottom. Inside you will find a stem upgrade, but if you push forward, you're going to pass this waterfall eventually and fight a legendary boss. And behind its cave, you're going to find the perk that you can just activate right away, but again, the drop-off is significant in the endgame. 
There are of course plenty other perks, but I did not cover them for various reasons, either because they were too weak or because they simply didn't work. For example, the centered perk, this would have been amazing, it already kinda is, since it can stagger enemies whenever you pop a stem heal. But this also has a no interruption buff, which should have worked, so Cal should take one hit and not be interrupted, but this one simply does not work. And if it did, it would have basically have combined two other mods into this, which would have been the steadfast and the unflinching, except the one on the centered perk would have been much better. But for some reason, it does not work, at least from my testing. Flux was another one that I found really bad, especially after like very early in the game. Normally, it should let you continue to reach on your force over time, but I found that the penalty here is that it reduces your max force meter by a significant margin, basically less than like a third of what it used to be at max level. So technically, it doesn't really make sense in the end game, but it might be useful in the early game. Anyway, that's about it. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.